Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, restart that. Uh, again, this is John Bailey with NetMotion Wireless. Um, thank you for everyone for joining. So really excited today. We've got some great topics to talk about. Um, we've got some really new and exciting features. And you know, it, it's it's always great to talk about something new. So I think you'll really be a, you'll really like what you see today. And you know, all of you are, are eligible to to start using this. So um, be really interesting to get your thoughts. Now, it's going to be a pretty straightforward and fairly short uh, webinar. I know we've allocated, I, I believe, about 45 minutes. But basically, what I'll do is I'm going to dive right into what the product is, what the feature is. Um, I'll show you a bit of a demo on how it works. And then we'll leave time at the end for q and I'm sure there will be questions. Now, because we have so many folks on the line, I want to make sure that uh, we get to your questions. And you know, rather than uh, unmute everybody um, to do questions, please use the question control panel. What we will do is, uh, at the end, I will go through the questions. And if, for some reason, I don't get to your question, we'll follow up with you after the webinar. So. So don't worry, the questions are saved. Um, we'll definitely get to them. But again, really exciting to talk about this topic. So let's dive right in. So what we've got is what we call net motion diagnostics. Okay. Now, if you think about remote workers, remote field users, any sort of mobile user in the field, how do you troubleshoot issues that, that arise around connectivity? Now, what's funny is, I did this presentation for a, a, a customer local here, and basically, when I brought up this slide, the, the, the gentleman on the other end actually started laughing, you know, because it, what, what my point was is, how do the issues come to you? You know, when you have a user that reports a problem, what are the things that they say? You know, they may say, okay, I can't get connected, or probably the application's not working, the network is down. You know, at the end of the day, what they're, they're sort of leading up to is, is they're unable to do their job. Now, there may be a lot of folks on, on this particular call that get these, you know, are responsible for their help desk and they get these kind of issues brought to them, and it makes it really, really difficult for IT to sort of pinpoint the problem. And when you think about, you know, really any mobile worker, I don't care if it's someone that works from home, if it's someone that's out in the field, if it's someone that's, you know, in a, in a vehicle with a, a tough book or it's a tablet user coming into your home, if you think about the path that that connection makes, generally speaking, it's the same, right? So you think about, if you look on the left here, you think about, you start with the device, right? The device itself, is it having a particular problem? What about the local network that device is connecting to? You know, this could be, you know, a remote worker. This could be their home Wi-Fi. Um, this could be someone on, on an air card out in the field. You know, is there a problem with that connection? Let's say that they can get that connection okay, but they can't actually get out to the internet. You know, they, their local connection's fine, they're out of uh, Starbucks Wi-Fi, but there's something wrong with that Starbucks connection. Or maybe there's something that's changed at the firewall back at corporate, right? So they get all the way to that point, and then you, you've got the VPN itself, right? And that could be, you know, net motion mobility. It could even be another VPN. You know, can you actually get a connection to the VPN? And then you troubleshoot all the way up into that point, and then you're left with the internal network, you know, and, and we all know Changes happen. Sometimes changes affect, you know, other, other have side effects of other things. And it could be that there was some internal change that happened with maybe a router that all of a sudden the users can get all the way into the network, but they can't actually connect to the application. So this is what's difficult. You know, if you're a help desk person or an IT person, you, you have to pinpoint where the problem is occurring through all of these connection spots, right? And potentially you're doing that just over the phone. You might be doing that with a user who, you know, is not an IT savvy person, right? That's not their responsibility to be IT. Um, their responsibility is to use this tablet as a tool that you've given them. And now you have to troubleshoot all of these different, different areas to try to pinpoint the problem. So what if you could push a button or have the user push a button and troubleshoot every connection point automatically? And that's what NetMotion Diagnostics is. NetMotion Diagnostics is the ability to do automatic diagnosing of the issue, automatic troubleshooting of all of the touch points along the path that a connection makes 
so you can quickly start working on the problem instead of trying to diagnose where it might be that you need to start working, right? And again, the beauty of this, and I'll show you this real time, is it really is an easy button. So the end user, they don't need to know anything but click here. And then you can get all the data you need, or the IT help desk can get all the data they need to start working on the actual problem. So, you know, there's a lot of things along that path, right? When you think of each step along that path and, and how you would troubleshoot that, we've gone to great lengths to really do an extensive amount of tests at each connection point. So some of the things that we did, we talked with a, a lot of our customers. Um, we asked them, you know, how do you troubleshoot a, a user in the field? Um, I've asked customers myself this question. You know, when, when a user has a problem, you know, how do you troubleshoot? And, and in some extreme cases, I, I've heard them say, well, we just have them bring the device in. You know, we don't even bother trying to do it remotely because it, it, it takes so much time that we, have, we call them back in. And, and you know, some are, are maybe savvy. They've got some additional tools. They might have some scripts. But we've looked at all of these different steps that, you know, these help desks take, including our own help desk. You know, when, when one of you folks might call in with an issue about that you're having, you know, with connectivity and you're calling that motion about it, what are the steps that our own help desk goes through? What are the things they look for? And so if you look at this slide, um, this is sort of a roll-up of some of the things we do. But, you know, again, we're doing extensive tests, so such as the, the device. We're not just looking to see if the adapter is alive or active. We're actually looking at things on the adapter itself, you know, such as, you know, does it have a valid IP address? Is, is it on a cellular, but it's an LTE card and it's only getting 2G? Um, we also look at, you know, the routing table. We look at the local gateway. If there's GPS on that device, we will actually grab the GPS information as well. So not only can we troubleshoot the problem, but we can also show you where the device was when it had that problem. When it comes to the Internet and, and testing the Internet, you know, you think of, if you've ever, you know, myself, you know, I, ha I help people, just friends or whatnot, or, or maybe family members in most cases, and, you know, can you bring up a browser and go to Google, right? Or can you go to this particular website? Sort of those simple tests. We're doing an extensive amount of tests. We actually have some servers that we host, so we know that they're reliable. We know that they will be open or up, and we use those to do tests. We, we use tests, you know, such as obvious tests like can I resolve host names, but we're also reaching out to those servers that we host and validating, can I not only connect to it, but can I actually pull down data from it? Can I do a valid HTTP request off that content and validate that the content actually came through? So again, you know, the point being is, is we're doing very extensive tests, and I'll drill into a couple of them. One of the parts that to me, you know, is the most exciting, and when, when we started talking about this product, you know, it was exciting anyway, and we're all anxious, you know, as it's being developed. But to me, I, I kept thinking, what is, what is going to hit home for folks, and what are they going to be really excited to see? And it, the best part that I think is the fact that you can create your own tests. So not only are we going to do just the same set of these end-to-end -end tests always, we'll always do those, but then you can create your own additional tests. So some of these things, you know, I think back to, you know, years ago when, when basically, you know, I was on the IT help desk side and the typical tests we would run and, you know, trying to explain, you know, to a user over the phone, hey, can you tell me to the server on this port? You know, trying to just say that was so confusing. And even if they were pretty technical savvy, it was kind of confusing. But there's some tests you can run to validate if, the, if it's an issue with the application inside the network. So, for example, let's just say I can get all the way in and get connected to the NetMotion server. What about the next hop? What about the next gateway? You know, those of you that are familiar with how mobility works, you know we have a pool of addresses that we're routing inside the network. What if something inside the network has changed and all of a sudden those can't route? What if you could have the user push a button and it would determine that? Or it would determine that they can route, but it's say the application server is down, you know, maybe it's SharePoint and that's the most important application they're using and they can't do, they can't pull HTTP content off SharePoint for some reason. Again, this isn't going to sort of solve the problem, but it's going to give you the, the quick and easy tool to pinpoint where you can start troubleshooting. Now the other point, point about this slide up in the upper right corner, and again, it's a lot of words, so, you, you know, you'll get a copy of this deck afterwards sent to you is you could use this with any VPN. It doesn't have to be NetMotion. 
So net motion mobility, there's some additional features to this in that we can interrogate our own product. But even for, say, like I mentioned, you may have a, a large mobility deployment, but then you may have a, another deployment of remote access users, which are users that work from home, that maybe don't need all of the functionality of a truly mobile VPN, but wouldn't it be great if you could have a tool to troubleshoot those users as well? And again, it's sort of what we might call the easy button. So what happens, too, when the user runs this, when they run this diagnostic test, and again, it's as easy as pushing a button, it will give them some information. So if you look on the left here, they're going to see some basic information, such as, you know, the problem is with Internet connectivity. If they want, they can drill into that and see more details. So depending on their skill set, they may or may, may or may not want to do that. But what's great about it is it will also automatically send that report up to the server. And so that's where you would go and log into the server console, and you could actually see the report. So, you know, one question that might come up, because this, this has come up a few times, is, well, what if the problem is that they can't get connected to the Internet, right? How do you send that report? So obviously, they can't send it if there's no connection. But what they can do, and, you know, maybe this is a bit of training for the user, is, you know, click that. If it says Internet connectivity is the issue, then, you know, go to a location where you can get connected to the Internet. The report will automatically be sent once it can connect and know that IT is working on the issue now. Um, they can also pull it off the device if they wanted to do that, the report. And then the server, the console, which I'll show you, that's where you can actually log in, and then you can see the actual report. And not only can you see it, but we will essentially show you, you know, here's where the test failed. And that's where you can look at, okay, let's see the results that, you know, mobile, mobile, mobile diagnostics found, and let me compare that to what my additional troubleshooting I can do at that particular site location to determine what the problem is. So again, this is meant to give you as many tools as possible, as easy as possible to essentially quickly diagnose the problem. And if you think of back to sort of the first slide and, you know, the route that an IT help desk person has to take, I mean, it's, a, it's an easy ROI to think, wow, how much time does my help desk spend troubleshooting remote user problems because of the difficulty of actually doing that, you know, it, difficulty of working to try to get the information at each point where the problem could arise. Now, with diagnostics, there is another, you know, hand-in-hand -hand ability, which is alerting. So not only can I essentially tell my users that if you ever have an issue, push this button, and know that, you know, someone will get the information. Maybe I can even plug it in on the back end that there's a process that then they then create a ticket you know, for that user. But I can also configure alerts such that alert me if someone has pushed the help button, the diagnostics button, and the test, a test failed. So it could be that you know, they, sent, they pushed it because they thought they had a problem and all the tests passed. And, you know, that might be a lot of data that, you know, if you have a 1,000 users out there, maybe you don't want to pile through all that. But you could get alerted if one, one fails. So then you know, okay, something is wrong with this user. I need the help desk to go in there, and I need to start working on that issue. And these alerts can be sent via email, or they could be sent via text. So you could have maybe um, an email alias for the help desk. And, again, that could be where it automatically opens up a ticket. And in addition, maybe you could have a, a, you know, a text message sent to maybe the help desk manager so they know, okay, someone, this, someone just pushed this. Maybe you do it on an initial rollout of a large group because you want to make sure it goes smooth. This gives you the ability to proactively start working on issues. You know, again, the user may not have even called in yet. And you know, a typical user out there, because trust me, I'm a user and I, I'm remote and I've done this myself, you may tend to just say there's a problem, reboot, and the help desk never knows about it. This is a nice way where you could tell them, if you have a problem, push this button and know that they're going to get the data to work on it. And sure, if you then go reboot and the problem goes away, great. But at least we have the data so we can actually start working on it. Now, with alerting, we've also added several additional alerts you can do. So, you know, the one I'm focusing on is around the diagnostics. But in addition, you could do some alerting on cellular usage. So one of the, the features that we had um, requested quite a bit in the last year or so is 
tell me when you know a cellular data card goes over a certain usage in say 24 hours and you now will have the ability to say okay if if a cellular device goes over say a gig in 24 hours I need to get an alert immediately because you know that is something of concern and I'll give you a real-world example with this um, we're actually we've been using this ourselves internally you know since um, since since it came out in beta for us and um, I set it up to get an alert personally if a device could go over a gig of data and you know it, a lot of it was just testing out different scenarios and then one day I got a text on my phone that a particular device had gone over a gig of data and so I reached out to that person which was an employee and so what's interesting is you think about especially things like you know your tablets you know your iPads or, or your Surface Pros or what have you you know cellular nowadays with LTE can be so fast that it can be deceptive that you're actually on cellular when you might think that you're on Wi-Fi and so in a lot of cases you may tend to kind of forget that you need to make sure you're not on cellular right now because the speed's so great that I can watch this movie or I can download this stream and, and you know watch the game on my iPad and this is great but it's going over a data plan that we're paying for and so that's what that what, what had happened in this case is, is the person just didn't even realize they completely didn't realize that they were actually on cellular and they were they were streaming a movie so you know that's a great feature that we've added and I'll go in and I'll show you some of these different um, alerts that you can get here's just a quick example of what they might look like um, again on, you know you can customize the text you want to have put in there and again it, you, it can be an SMS um, we do provide the SMS gateway so you don't have to worry about that or it could be an email you know in an email or it could be both it could be a combination of the two and again an email could be you know maybe it's a it's an, a distribution list of the right folks that need to take care of the end users okay so let me jump out and kind of show you what it actually is so first off let me talk about you know the quote unquote easy button that, that I started off with here there's several ways you could do this okay and again it's completely up to you on how you want to do it if you are a mobility customer and you have our latest version you, you could have the users right click on the mobility icon and just click on this diagnose network problems and it will automatically run the test that you've configured okay so, so that's pretty easy you know if they're a mobility user they're probably used to that icon already anyway you could also pin this little icon to the desktop and you can see if I mouse over it, it says run mobile diagnostics so again very straightforward that could be the easy button you can put it on the desktop instead here it is right here or you could even customize it so here's the same thing with this you know it's not the fanciest icon I chose but you know help this diagnose diagnostics this could be you know literally the easy button or it could be something that works for you that you could you know then take a screenshot of that that goes out to the users hey if you have a problem click on this and again all of the tests will be run and automatically sent up to the console so let's take a look at the console itself um, basically what will happen is what I'm looking at are reports that have been run and sent up to the console and they're stored on the console for 30 days so you know our thinking was sort of after 30 days you know this this sort of real-time troubleshooting data is probably not worthwhile so we basically purge it after 30 days there is also the ability for the end user to add a comment so you see some users added comment and then we also if we think there's a problem we give you sort of a hint that of where the problem might be so in this case we think okay this this one failed you can see by the X and it failed the Linux server test so maybe that was a server inside my network that my applications run off and you know this particular user couldn't reach that server so you know again this will, all of these will tests will be run on automatically if I click into this I can then see I'll just do this here I can then see all of the different tests that we run again we kind of do a high-level roll-up so like the device test pass the internet test pass um, the the custom tests failed and in this case you know it's this one here this particular test failed now let me just show you an example I'll just pick one here um, we'll do internet connectivity if, if from the high level you know especially if the test pass you may not even really care about drilling into the details but if if a test failed there 
I just want to show you how many things we actually look at. So here's an example. You know, we're doing a lot of tests, you know, in each category. So in this case, you know, again, I mentioned we're hosting some servers. So we validated we can actually resolve that server. We can ping to it. Um, we're, we're testing the response time of pings. So, you know, if a packet is dropped, we will actually report on that. Um, you know, we're looking at the statistics. Then we're even making sure we can load a page. So we're doing much more than just a few simple pings or a few simple tests. Each connection point is a series of tests that are run, okay? So again, these will automatically be sent up to the server. Um, I'll show you if I go over to the uh, mobile diagnostics here. You know, again, um, there's a, a, a series of tests that are always run, and then you can create your own custom test. So what's great about this is if you look at the, all the different things you can do, right? So a couple of them, you know, I mentioned the telnet to the server on this port. That's, you know, the equivalent of doing sort of a TCP connect. And, and that is a great way to validate, can I actually connect to that server on that particular port? This is a test that, you know, a lot of times we'll use if we believe the issue is with an internal firewall or with a routing issue. Um, maybe I can ping the box fine, but I can't, you know, I can't do a, a connect to it on the particular port, which means either the firewall is blocking it or dropping it, or it's not listening on that port, which means the application is down. So it's a great test to run. You can combine different tests too, such as ping and trace route, and these would all be run internally. And this is how you can sort of validate that there's nothing wrong with the path. You know, so maybe these will be coming from the VIP pool, and maybe you say, okay, let's ping that internal gateway. That kind of assures me that. I can at least get inside the network and my routing should be okay. Then I can do things like, let's do you know, an HTTP test on our main internal web server. That will validate that I can get all the way in, I can load a web page. So if the user still can't connect to the app, there's something wrong with the app. You know, I, I know that there's nothing wrong with their routing and their connection, so I can drill directly down into that. So it, we, we're giving you an extensive amount of tests. What's great about this too, because this is really our first you know, rev into this ability is we will only just continue to add features to this. This is this is definitely, you know, as a company, th this is sort of the year of exciting features. And so I'm personally excited about that. I know of a lot of them coming and there's some additional ones around re reporting that are very, very soon. So this will be great. This is, a, you know, we started here. This is a natural place to start adding additional tests. Okay. Now let's look at alerts. So alerting um, you know, the concept is pretty straightforward, right? If I go in here and show the different alerts I can create, you know, for example, the diagnostics, I could say, okay, alert me every time a diagnostics report fails, right? So it's, it's very simple to set up, and then I just decide, you know, do I want to send a text to someone? Do I want to send an email? Do I want to add additional information, you know, such as, you know, I'm running the diagnostics test or, or something? You know, but this is very, very easy to configure, and um, you know, you can configure this for both SMS and SMTP, or or one or the other. You can also do things like I'd mentioned before, such as adapter usage. So again, this is you know, show me every time an adapter goes over a gig in the last day. You know, so 24-hour period an adapter, you know, a cellular card went over a gig. I need to know about that because that's a that's a big concern because I'm paying for you know say five gig a month or whatever it is per user, or it's a shared data plan and I need to really manage that. This is a great one to, to notify. There's, then there's one that we added which is kind of interesting um, around adapter inactivity. And that sort of came into play from some of our very large deployments. Some of the, uh, the things that would happen is you know just managing all of the adapters in the field, a lot of times they might have adapters out there, you know, with cellular plans that haven't been used in months. And it would be great if I could just get notified when a particular adapter hasn't been used in, in 45 days, shoot me a text, and great, I can contact that user and find out what's going on, or I can cancel that data plan. So it's just a nice way for, you know, so the admin doesn't have to go dig through the information that we can just send it to them automatically and they can go take a look at it. Okay. Um, again, I, I know that some questions are coming in, and I'll, de I'll definitely get to them. Um, but, you know, also wanted to mention just a few additional things that, uh, you know, all, everyone on the phone should be a, a currently a locality customer. Um, 
and uh, you are eligible to get this product. The key is you do need premium support. So if you need premium support, um, basically it's available for download now. Uh, it's version 3.0, and you will want to get both you know, the server and the client. Now, one great thing that we added in Q4 of last year to mobility is mobility, at least version 10.51, has the ability to automatically push out agents. So what you can do is if you have that version of mobility, if you don't, you can upgrade and, you, and you'll get that feature. But what you can do is you can automatically update the agents in the field. So now all of a sudden they have this mobile diagnostics feature. So again, really excited about this. Um, it, it, it is the year of features for us. Um, if you do have any specific questions or you, know, you want a deeper dive demo or you're not sure if you, what kind of support plan you have, definitely just shoot a note to your, either your local sales rep if, if you know them or just send it to sales at netmotionwireless.com and, and someone will definitely get back to you. So let me take a stab at some of the questions here. Um, so great question. If we, and I think I probably answered this, but, but I'll answer it again because I didn't answer it real time. So good question here. So if, if we don't give users access to the system tray, is there another way of having them start diagnostics? Um, great question. So if you remember um, when I was showing you, there's, there's really kind of three different options. So two of them would be on the system tray. And the third one could be an icon on the desktop. So that icon you can completely control. You can even change the icon itself, change the text, change the graphic. And you know, if you control the image, then you can just push that down and put it on the desktop. They don't need to access the system tray at all. Um, do, 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 do. Um, so, so good question. So. Will the alerts be from a device similar to getting alerts from servers using analytics? An sorry, analytics. Um, correct, except for um, text. So you know, basically, the 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 email alerts. Um, you're you're able to kind of customize the message that would come from your SMTP gateway. So you know, that's something that you would be pointing to for text. It would come from our SMT our SMS gateway that we host. So it would look like you know you're getting a text from it would be um, I think we put a, a header on there so you know what it's coming from but then you can customize the message the, the the beginning of the message that goes in there so you know hey this is related to an alert that I've configured um, for a particular user okay um, another another question here uh, so the question is does it require mobility um, good question and. and I hopefully covered that early on, but just to make it clear, this this product is independent of mobility. So you could use this, like I mentioned, let's just say you have some users out there that you know are running a different mobile VPN, right, or a different VPN. They're work from home users. They, you know, they're on, I, I don't know, they're on some local router that that's how they connect. You could use it for them and um, basically still do all of the tests except the only test that it wouldn't be able to do is to validate the VPN itself because we can actually do some queries there so you, you know great question and um, the other part of that question which maybe just to make sure it's clear um, in case I wasn't clear this will run these tests regardless of the local connection so in other words it, it doesn't care if you're on Ethernet if I'm on Wi-Fi if I'm on cellular it will still run all of these tests and validate the local adapter connection. It'll even get to the point of if I'm on Wi-Fi, is and I'm at a hotspot, do I have to you know accept the terms and, and conditions of that local hotspot before I can I can connect? And and that's known as a captive portal. It will actually validate if that is the issue that that is being blocked somehow or that needs to be accepted. So um there, so very powerful. Um, let me see, quick question here. Oh, wow, this is a, this is a good question. Um, so, you know, with 10.5.1, it, it, you know, we have the ability to push out an agent, and the question is, can we use it to remove an agent? <laughs> and unfortunately, no, but, but there's some things you can do there. So if you wanted to, quote, unquote, remove an agent, in the, in the locality console under the system licensing tab, you can remove it there. So you can revoke a license. 
Now, what you'll need to do is then, you know, at the same time or maybe beforehand, is you know either stop that locality agent on the device or uninstall it. You know, and maybe you have some tools to do that because it, it'll try to connect again and then it'll consume another license. So you will need to to do both pieces really. Um, okay, great. Oh, great, great question. So. Is there a tie-in, and I'm glad you asked this because I meant to say this, is there a tie-in with mobility that can be used to set an external condition or tie into NAC somehow? Excellent question. One of the additional ways you can run the mobile diagnostics is you can run it from the command line. So what this means is absolutely you can tie it into NAC and policy. So for example, um, let's say you create a policy rule that says, if I can't connect to a particular server, like if I can't connect to the NetMotion server for 30 seconds, I want to automatically run diagnostics. And we tested that in-house. That's actually a policy we have configured already. Um, it, it will come as an example with the product if you need it. If for some reason it doesn't show up, let us know and we can easily get it to you. But you could also tie it into NAC. You know, maybe I can do some NAC checks of different registry keys or you know different parts of the OS and if I see something that triggers a flag for me I can run a diagnostics automatically so great question that is one piece I, I missed you can run from the command line this also means if you have your own tools to maybe sort of do some troubleshooting part of that process could be to maybe kick off a diagnostics at the end so not only have you checked what, what you would normally check but then you have the full diagnostics with it as well Okay, let me see, there's another question here. Um, um, so, so this question is, is a little more complicated than just answering over the phone. So I'll probably reach out to you directly in terms of the custom, custom text, tests and running DNS, um, in you know, basically what sort of tests do we run. So I'll, I'll reach out to you directly with the answer on that one. Um, I can show you the actual test that we run. Okay. Excellent question. Thanks, everyone. And again, if you have a question, please use the system tray. Um, if not, that is essentially all of our content for today. I will definitely stay on to answer any additional questions. But um, thanks again. Good question. What version do I need of both products um, for this? So uh, for mobility, um, there's a new agent that just came out, which is version 10.52. And um, for locality, it will be version 3.0. And uh, we haven't really done a large public announcement of this. It's been very sort of quiet. Um, so you should, if you have premium support, you should have locality 3.0 up on, you know, the your customer portal. If not, please reach out to us and we can work with you directly. Um, but mobility, you would want to have version 10.52 of the client, at least 10.51 of the server. And again, um, to the, the last person's question, if you do have premium support, correct, you you get this feature automatically. You would just need to upgrade. Um, another question came in, will it work with older versions of the locality client? Um, unfortunately, no. The, the sort of the, the guts of, of this technology is in the locality client, so you will need to upgrade to version 3.0 of the client um, to get this feature.
Another question is, um, if we do not have premium support, uh, are we able to test this out? Um, my, my recommendation on that is to reach out to, again, to your sales rep. If you don't know your sales rep, just you know, use this alias here, sales at netmotionwireless.com. Uh, they can certainly work with you on that. And uh, you know, someone, if, again, if you don't know your sales rep, if you just email that uh, distribution list, someone will get back to you. Okay, thanks again everyone. Um, I'll stay on for a few more minutes to see if there's any other questions. But if not, you know, I really appreciate everyone joining. And again, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be releasing a lot of features this year. So look for more webinars um, throughout the year. And uh, it's going to be an exciting time. All right, thanks again, everyone. It looks like the questions have kind of died down. There's a few folks that we'll probably follow up with directly. Um, I know you had some specific questions and may need some assistance. But uh, thanks, everyone, for attending. And uh, that is it for today. Have a good day.